food plots and what I want to do today is just kind of go over what you guys are seeing me doing out on some of these food plots. We're going to talk about minerals, we got trophy rocks, water holes, kind of what I got going on this year and what I do with my little kill plots and uh, we'll just discuss all the options and all the fun you can have with them and uh, things that you can do in the off season like right now it's mid-July you know fishing's not that great right now it's just kind of the dog days of summer and uh, you know there's a lot of things you can be doing on your hunting property to get ready for the season a lot of different fun things and we're gonna go over some of those and uh, you know maybe you guys can use some of them so let's rip all right this food plot here behind me it's a new food plot I put in this year and whenever you're you're putting in new plots it takes a lot of perseverance and patience to get it going the the, the sod bed and the seed bed that's established from years and years and years and years of everything and all the weeds and everything else growing on it is super hard super hard to break up and kill it so you can plant whatever you want to plant and uh, you just keep working the soil you got to spray it and spray it and spray it you got to make sure everything is dead on it and keep working it up you need to remove the thatch you'll be able to work the ground up but once you get to this point and you seed it, which I have, I've, I've seeded this strictly with just clover, a couple different types of clover, and we've had some really good rains and we're just starting to see a little, little germination. And um, I'll kind of go over some of the things that I'm doing to maintain this plot and keep it going, but clover is really, really, really slow. So just be patient with it. You're gonna get weeds, you're gonna get grass. Just go with it, just, just, I can't stress it enough to just be patient with it. You're not going to have this perfect prestige food plot, you know, probably your first year or two. It just takes time to, to get that weed bed under control. And uh, what we've done here is we've got everything uh, dissed up with the, with the ATV. We can't get in here with big equipment, which is another reason why these little plots are awesome because you can get them in such little cool secluded spots with lots of security cover on them. But what we're doing here is I'm not overseeding it with anything else. And there's two other plots, so there's three plots we're going to look at today. And they're all kind of in different stages, and I'm doing all different things with them. So I'll explain to you what they're doing. So what, what we've got is just clover here. There's, I didn't overseed it with anything. It's just clover, and I believe I mixed in a little bit of chicory I had left over. So what, what, what's going to happen here is some of the clover is going to start, some of the chicory is going to start. And once it starts growing, I'm going to have voluntary grass, I'm going to have broadleaf weeds. That's fine, don't worry about it. Once it grows up, you know, and it starts getting green and lush, we'll spray it with a rest to kill the grass. You're still going to have broadleaf weeds, and what we'll do with that is just mow it. Mowing with clover is unbelievable how much it helps. I'll just bring in an old crappy little push mower I got and, and put the deck up as high as it goes. You, I mean don't really want to mow it a whole like super low to the ground but as high as a deck mower your uh, deck on your push mower will go is just fine and then what what happens there is it it it, it um, um, stimulates new growth for that clover and it comes back even thicker and you just keep chipping away at it and eventually you'll have a really cool plot but I'll show you here we've got some new sprouts coming here a clover some grasses and things like that too but that's expected and uh, and uh, I'll show you some other things like we do with edge maintenance and things like that. And, and uh, we got a stand hung on this one. We'll crawl up there and I'll show you the view of that. Uh, we got a water hole in here. We got a mineral site with a camera on it. Uh, we'll talk about water holes more on, uh, on the far plot when we get in there. I've got another one there. And uh, yeah, we're just going to go over this stuff. But I'll, I'll show you what I'm doing to the edges here to help maintain and, and, and help keep these weeds down. Okay, what you're looking at here is you can see the first couple, you know, foot to four feet of the edge of the food plot all the way around it. And what I'm really experimenting with here is keeping those matured weeds that are right up to the edge of your food plot under control. 
if you keep them cut, I come in here with a with a weed whip. You can even spray it, but I like a little bit of growth so you don't have the erosion and things like that. And and uh, you, you know your seeds aren't washing and everything. Your your uh, your edges stay nice. But if you keep these weeds from maturing and you keep them short, you know, heavy duty weed whip, lawnmower, whatever, and you keep that first couple feet around your food plot, and it's really, I've done it on a couple of them, not all of them, and I'm just kind of experimenting and running and seeing how effective it really is, but it's really seeming to help a lot where if you keep the first couple feet of your food plot cut down like this, all the, the a lot of the broad leaves and even some of the grasses, but they'll mature and they'll seed out. And your, the seed from those first few feet are what's dumping right into your food plot and you're getting a lot more uh, uh, unwanted weed growth. And all that vegetation that you're having such a struggle with trying to get rid of, you're just dumping it back in there. So by cutting the few feet of the edge of the food plot, it makes it a little bit harder for that seed. I mean, granted, there's still going to be seed blowing around and things like that, but if you can keep your edges really nice and clean, it, it, it's really seeming to be uh, uh, an asset, and it really is cutting down on, on uh, this unwanted weed growth that I'm getting. So just a little quick, easy tip, a little something to do to, to, to really help reduce your weeds in your food plots. All right, we're tucked back in here. We, we've got a stand right off this plot. It's a double, double ladder stand. I think it's only like a 15 footer. Um, we kind of put this up with the intentions of both Crystal and I being able to hunt it uh, together. So we got a double ladder set on it. And uh, we're gonna crawl up here and we're gonna show you the reason this set is where it's at. And we're going to show you the sweet view. Let's go up. on the water hole or in front of us here because a lot of the deer are coming from the west here and we got to get some bungee cords in here and get some of these pine trees here bungee corded down to keep us keep us uh, uh, concealed a lot better but don't go too nuts with cutting all the all the limbs around your sets you want to keep a lot of that stuff you know you got to remember you're only shooting an arrow you're not shooting a cannonball keep some of that stuff to, to give you some good backing and to break you up. But this is the view and this is the uh, this is the plan right here. Well, how I set a lot of my, my uh, sets, how I hang a lot of my sets is I do most of them with the exception of a few salt sets is uh, I try to hang mostly because your prim primary wind mainly in the fall is going to be a northwest wind with some exceptions of some fronts with the south southeast wind. So I try to do a lot of northwest wind sets and some salt sets. Here you could theoretically hunt both but it's best for a northwest and you can see behind me there's a nice, uh, nice lane cut through this uh, stand of pines behind me that the deer are skirting through so I mean there's really a lot of options with this set which is huge because it opens you up to a hunt a lot of different scenarios but when you're hanging sets on your plots keep in mind the wind direction your primary winds because if you there's a great tree and it's set up right where the deer are coming from but it's bad for the winds it's just not good and it takes self-discipline to not hunt a really good spot and a really perfect tree because it's in the wrong spot which theoretically means it's not a perfect tree so keep that in mind when you're hanging these sets on your plots you know and a lot of the times when you when you implement a plot and you put a plot in a lot of the times that's a huge thing I'll consider if there's no trees around or there's not a really good place to hunt it it's not really a great place to put a plot 
um, you know, with the exception of ground blinds, and one of the food plots is exactly that. There's not a whole lot of great trees, and we got a we got a uh, ground blind on it. So I mean, there's a lot of options, but keep that in mind: uh, the the placement of your food plot, and and so importantly, the placement of your set that you're gonna that you're gonna be hunting out of on that food plot. And don't forget your entrance and exit routes. Have a couple different options. You know, getting in and out. That's just as important as anything else. So. If you if you dot your I's and and slash your T's, you're gonna have a lot more success on these little kill plots and hanging your sets. <laughs> oh man, sitting in the stand is driving me nuts. All right, we're gonna gather up our stuff here and the camera equipment and our bag. We're gonna head over to one of the other food plots and we'll just kind of go over there, go over everything over there too. Let's check her out. Yeah. All right, this is one of those small food plots. This one's the smallest of the three plots we're gonna look at today. And it's in the thickest, heaviest cover of all three plots. And the nice thing about this is you got thick security cover all the way around it. And what the main purpose of these little, that's why I call them kill plots and not food plots, they're not really a sub. Uh, 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 they're not a. They're not, it's not a food source that these deer can sustain themselves on. Basically, what it is is it's an appetizer before they head out at night into the big ag fields. Okay, and what we're trying to do with these little kill plots. That's why I call them kill plots is because you're trying to kill a deer on them. You're not necessarily feeding the deer. And what it is is their incentives for the deer to poke their head out into during shooting hours. You know, a lot of times these deer will stage up in this heavy cover before they go out into the big fields to eat. So what we're trying to do is throw a little curveball at them and give them a, a, a little bit of incentive to poke their head out during shooting light hours. But what I've got here in this plot I seeded it with brassicas and a few turnips and there's some oats and rye in it and I experimented with it this year and I mowed it because everything kind of stunted out and the grasses are growing but my turnips, turnips and brassicas have kind of run their course so what I did while there's still decent forage in here is I over seeded it with clover and chicory and what I'm trying to do basically through the years is establish really healthy clover plots. The more I've planted these small kill plots over the years, I find that clover is a go-to and, and these uh, bugs are getting nasty. But a lot of these annuals, like the brassicas and turnips, are awesome for overseeding and giving that clover time to germinate. And it's just fun to experiment with this stuff. You know, I by no means am a wizard at this, and I'm just learning as I go, and this is the journal, this is my journal, and I'm sharing with you guys what works for me, what doesn't work, and hopefully you can take something from it and use on your property to, to help you kill more and better deer and, and to just improve the habitat. But we'll kind of go over some of the things here, and uh, there's some cool little things that I want to show you on this plot, but... I've got a camera right over here. We're going to pull the card and then uh, uh, we'll show you a few things on this one. All right, what you're seeing here is an old scrape from last fall in this plot. And you'll notice in a lot of my little plots, I leave a lot of these small trees in the center of the plot. Yeah, I could cut them down and dig out the stumps but I like a few of these trees inside these little plots for a lot of different reasons one of them is it kind of adds a little cover to it they still kind of feel like they're being sneaky in the cover they're not completely exposed uh, another thing is rubbing 
I like to see rubs on these trees out in the plots. But a really, really big one is scrapes. You get these overhanging branches. This is an old scrape from last fall. You'll get does coming in here and fawns and then bucks are going to come and check these things and they're going to make their scrapes and then they're going to get competitive over it. And that's exactly what you're trying to do. Uh, it's more influence. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot like trapping. You know, if you ever trap before and you're making sets and you add guiding to try and manipulate the animal to step in a certain spot, that's kind of what we're doing here with these kill plots. We're trying to manipulate the movement of these animals in a, in a way that not only, not only is beneficial to them, but it's also beneficial to us. So it's a win-win. We get habitat improvement. We get, to, we get to harvest some deer and have some awesome meat and, uh, and make memories that we're going to have the rest of our lives. So these little things, these little trees, and, 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 and if you do these little detailed things and, and make them feel like they're still sneaky in cover, man, they'll use these plots a lot more. All right, what we have here is this over the years is one of their main trails. This plot is sitting right on a saddle where these deer are going up and over. And I made this spot with the intention of the deer stopping here and spending a little bit more time here, creating more shot opportunities. And uh, it's, it's worked. I mean, the deer have really conjugated in here and it's become a, a real social area for them. Uh, we've got about four big entrances on here and what you can do again to the manipulation of movement thing is I'll take a weed whip in some of these spots and I'll weed whip their trails and I'll only go back maybe 30 yards or so but what that does is you know I'm sure you've heard it a million times deer and most creatures are creatures that'll take the path of least, least resistance they want to burn the least amount of energy and get the most out of it and that's exactly what this stuff does is you can do these little these little keep these little spots clean these little paths and them deer will start using that and eventually what you're going to have is you're going to have main access points to where the deer are going to enter your plots and you can set up your stands accordingly you know and you can kind of adjust these this way and that way and it's amazing how these deer will turn that into their main entrance and exits you know you don't have to blaze a big wide path a hundred yards out just make it you know 20, 30 yards, you know, off your plot, and them deer will start using that in and out, in and out, and in and out, and they'll disperse from there once they get to the end of it, and they'll go on their natural paths, and it's just something that really helps you uh, know where the deer are coming in and out of, and where you can set your stand according to the winds and everything else. It's just, it's just a little thing that I've been doing that, you know, it, for for minimal effort, you get awesome results off it. All right, here's another little path, but this one isn't for deer, <laughs> and this one's for me. And what I'll do is I'll come in, and, and again, talking about entrances and exits, is I'll make little paths where I can get to and from my stand when it's super thick. And you can see up in this elm, this big tall elm behind me, that's where our stand is overlooking this plot. And it is so thick and gnarly. This time of year, this is the kind of stuff you can come in here and do. You make your little pads and you get accesses and exits out of your stand, you know, from, say, maybe two different ways. Sometimes you can only get in and out of one way. But making these little pads, they'll grow up a little bit from the top now until hunting, but you kind of maintain a little bit of a, a, a path to get in and out of your stand quietly and cleanly. Um, man, it helps so much better. All your gear isn't hanging up, but we've got just a little goat path in there, and we're going to crawl up in the stand and uh, I'll show you the view from this little secluded, secluded plot, what that looks like from up in the tree. So we're going to crawl up there. All right, here's the uh, tree stand view from the secluded thick plot in the uh, saddle. Call this one the saddle plot. But you can see from up here, just how thick this cover is. I mean, once the fall comes and a lot of this foliage drops, it'll really open up a lot more, but you can see how those deer could 
feel a lot safer and secure in here stepping out and having a little munch before they go out into the big egg fields the the corn and beans and alfalfa and whatnot but this is what you're trying to create little kill plots and they work and you know getting up in these stands during the off season check your equipment make sure your straps are good I leave a lot of my stuff up and you gotta maintain them make sure the straps are good check your steps make sure everything is safe and in, in proper working order but also what really helps is you know when you got your plots down here you can really see what you need to do for for trimming if any trees had fallen any branches branches or anything like that limbs have gotten in your way or grown up we got a little bit of trimming to do back here yet and and there's nothing worse than climbing up in your stand ready for a hunt and it's like ah, oh, all them branches and them weeds grew up and that's all in my way and you know again dog days of summer this is the perfect time to take care of this stuff and it's you know it's fun to just be out here and 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 engage and be proactive involve yourself in the in the deer season and chasing these whitetails uh, throughout the entire year it doesn't have to be just a fall thing man you can make it all year long and and uh, uh, just more time in the woods man the better your life is well we're gonna climb down and uh, we're gonna go hit our last plot and and uh, go over a few things over there and pull that card and uh, and uh, we're gonna get out of here it's getting warm and buggy and uh, yeah, that's about it. So we're going to climb down and head on over to the last plot, Cedar Ridge. All right, another huge thing to keep in mind when you're out here tromping around in the middle of summer like this. Like I said earlier, it's uh, the middle of July. You really got to watch out for a lot of these kind of stuff. This is just a huge mat of poison ivy. And I've been covered with the stuff. I'm, I've got it all over me all summer long. You'd think I'd learn by now, but when you're out here, and it's, it's too hot right now to wear long sleeves, but long sleeves cover up no holes in your clothes and really try to avoid this stuff. I mean, it, it's not fun stuff to get into. There's a lot of poison ivy, and there's a lot of poison oak when you get into the more wooded areas. And another really bad thing that just gets, seems like it gets worse every year is the wild parsnips. And uh, there's an absolute ton of it out here now. And uh, uh, fortunately, a lot of it has matured and it's starting to brown up now. And, uh, but it can get really bad and that stuff will just leave big water burn blisters on you. And it's just, it's just not fun stuff. So just protect yourself, you know, wear, wear high ankle boots and just cover your skin and, and uh, just be wary of some of this stuff because it can bite back and it's not fun to deal with. Well, here we are. The final food plot I'm going to show you today. And uh, it's a doozy. You can see this clover and chicory. <laughs> it makes me happy. It's just come in so lush and so full. I've planted a lot of different things here and I've really been working up to this moment to where I've had the weeds under control enough and everything where I went ahead and uh, switched over from annuals to perennials and I've planted chicory and clover in here and uh, I used a, a, an overseed actually I didn't overseed it I just mixed it all together I put brassicas and a few turnips in with this and it kind of helps absorb some of the browse while the slower germinating clover is uh, getting established and it worked perfectly once the brassicas everything had kind of run their course and they stung it out and were matured and drying up and uh, I sprayed it with a rest to get rid of a lot of the grass you can see there's still some some voluntary grasses in here but uh, it's really good and uh, that got rid of the majority of the grass and I had a lot of broadleaf weeds and uh, what I did is I mowed it and uh, it's unbelievable mowing what it does you mow at the right time and, and, and you let those weeds um, start growing and you'll mow them off once you can see your clover underneath the weeds is trying to come through and it's germinated good. You can mow this down and that'll really promote your clover and chicory to just blow up 
which it's done and it's choked a lot of the broad leaves out. So what we have in this plot is mainly clover and chicory. Now, there's a few weeds yet, but you know, depending on how everything goes, I'll probably mow this one more time before the hunting season. And we're gonna have green forage, you know, hopefully well into November. Uh, you know, these plots are just monumental in your success in the fall and it really helps you create a, a more intimate relationship with your local wildlife and uh, seeing how they interact to the things that you're doing and it's just an absolute uh, uh, learning experience it's so humbling going over the trial and errors you're gonna have a lot of fails and I'm trying to help uh, reduce some of those for you by showing you videos like this I know uh, uh, this video has been a lot of talking and, and not a lot of action but that's kind of the, the general purpose of this video but um, I'm just going to kind of go over a few things on this plot and show you the water hole and um, kind of our setup. This is kind of a neat stand or a, a, a neat set we got. There's not a lot of good trees on this plot. I had a good one but it's died since then and uh, we actually got a ground blind over here and uh, we call this the Cedar Ridge plot and uh, talk about the water hole a little bit and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll call it a day and wrap it up. But I'll show you. I'll show you this plot here. I'm gonna pull this card here off this camera quick. You know, when you're out here and you're doing all your land management, and you're running your cameras, having a cheap, you know, sporting camping backpack is so huge. You know, I, I carry uh, uh, something to drink in here, extra bug spray, some of my camera equipment, memory cards, extra batteries for the cameras. You know, it, it's horrible when you get out here and your batteries are about to die you just have everything together with you there's no forgetting stuff and it's just so huge having everything right at your fingertips it it helps so much if you're forgetful like me all right Here's the watering hole on the Cedar Ridge. This is my first watering hole and I put it here as an experiment. And the experiment was to see how much the deer would actually use this. And reason being, right behind me, this ridge drops off straight down and it's maybe 80 yards to a huge, clean, hard surface pond. And I say hard surface is, is the, the importance of that is the deer can walk right up to the bank. There's no mud, there's no nothing, and get a drink. I mean, it's just a, an absolutely astonishing water source for the wildlife. So I made this watering hole 80 yards from that to see just how much they'd use it. And honestly, they just absolutely pound it. I mean, pound it. There's there's water source right there and they just pound this thing. You're creating a one-stop shop. Okay? They can they they've got a mineral here, a trophy rock, you know, and there's no science with that. I put those out in front of my camera and I put the the watering hole, you know, I generally position that 10-15 feet behind my mineral site so I can cover both of them with one camera. And uh, it's amazing how wildlife gravitates towards any kind of water source. And these deer will graze in here, get a drink of water, graze in here, get a drink of water, pass through here, stop, get a drink of water. It's unbelievable. And you know, don't be afraid if you get a little duckweed and stuff growing in here. I found it actually helps filter the water and keep it cleaner. Um, but a really important thing is a, is a, is a, um, a rodent stick. And what that is, is your mice will follow into it and your small rodents. And if they get in here, a lot of the times they can't crawl out and they'll drown and it kind of contaminates your water. And if you got dead things floating around in your water, the deer kind of shy away from it. And you don't want contaminated, crappy water that the deer don't touch. So that rodent stick is huge. They can fall in and crawl up to it and get out of there. You know, especially if the water levels kind of succeed or uh, uh, um, go down. We just had a big rain, so it's, I mean, it's heaping right over. Uh, you can see it's clean, it's beautiful. Um, and the deer just absolutely pound it. It's a, it's a plastic, a thick plastic 15 gallon uh, uh, cattle tank. I like to use the plastic ones. They don't seem to spring as many leaks. Uh, 20 bucks out of any, you know, a lot of these stores that carry cattle and farm stuff. 
and uh, you just dig it in ground level and it's it's unbelievable how the deer utilize this so just another fun little uh, uh, thing you can implement to your plots to create these one-stop shops they're absolutely fun to watch with the cameras Man, look at this stuff. This clover and this chicory is just, man, does it make me smile. It's beautiful. And you'll see a lot of these, a lot of this clover has got the tops of them like this here nipped right off. And the deer are coming in here and they're browsing this off real nice. Man, it's, it's awesome. Everything's coming together real good. You know, like I said, uh, mowing it is huge. You come in here and you mow it down. And this, it just takes off. Look at this, they're all just chopped right off. That's what you want, you know, you want to create browse so, you know, they'll kind of keep it mowed down for you. And, and what you see in the store, a lot of this, where you can buy seed is, is all different kinds of seeds and everything. And what these companies are trying to do is they're trying to make a more palatable, digestible clover uh, for the whitetails as far as the clover and, and really all the forage you're planting in your food plots, you know Deer most critters period like that really uh, um, vulnerable Soft new growth any of these new sprouts this new this new growth is because it, it hasn't bittered up yet it, It's uh, it's more palatable to them and also it's more tender and it's easier easier to digest for them and and when you get when you don't have a ton of browse and your clover and everything gets real tall another beneficial part to mowing it is it again it generates this new smaller growth like this here under here and this smaller shorter stuff it's so much more palatable to the deer and it's so much easier for them to digest and when you get these taller plants they've matured out and they get real bitter and the deer don't pound them quite as hard and then the stems get bigger around and there's more stem to the plant so the deer kind of shy away from the stems and uh, um, because they're not real palatable you get them thick hard woody almost stems it's hard for their digestion uh, uh, to, to digest such big thick heavy heavy uh, forage so these little soft stems when they're when they're down there I mean they'll eat the whole plant you'll see pictures of the deer you know, actually grabbing it, nipping it off by the bottom, they got it hanging out and they just blah, 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 eat it just like a rabbit. So that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to keep this young, new growth where it's more palatable, it's easily to, di uh, to digest for the deer. And I mean, you can see this chicory is, is even just mowed right off from the deer and, and uh, they're in here really good. And this is gonna be fun to hunt. And um, we'll go over here and show you because this plot is, uh, it's kind of cool, you know, because there's not a lot of really great places to hang a stand. A lot of the trees are real immature and small, and the ones that are a little bit bigger are, well, they're dead. So what we're going to do is I'll show you the little, the little uh, um, ground blind we got set up on this. There's a couple different really cool spots that I made for ground blinds when I put this plot in. I transplanted some of these cedar trees into little circles and clusters so we have options uh, uh, different options to put uh, uh, um, our pop-up ground blinds on but I'll show you where we got one now I, I've kind of left it there over the summer let the deer kind of get a, uh, accumulated to it and um, yeah we'll walk over there and I'll, I'll show that to you well here she is the old uh, the old ground blind you can see where I had it all brushed in with these some of these cedar limbs and they've obviously dried up and browned up and you know it's still pretty good cover but what we'll do closer to hunting season is we'll go around and clip a few more of these sporadic limbs off some of these uh, cedar trees and we'll just kind of blend some of the green back in but you know on the camera the deer walk through this and they walk by this and uh, they don't bat an eye at it and once we brush it in a little better it'll it'll be well, even better but we'll crawl inside it and we'll show you what the view looks like from inside it. So we're going to crawl in here and it's, it's probably going to be like an oven in there, but we'll, we'll show you what it looks like. Well, here's kind of the view. I know it's pretty, pretty tough to see what we're looking at here. But straight in front of us there is the food plot. And then uh, the watering hole is it's about 40 yards from here, but the deer are coming in. To the right a lot and they're just 
passing right through here uh, kind of kind of north to south so this is a good good location with the wind you know again that's huge and important getting in and out of this is pretty easy it's blended in nice um, so you know a lot of these places where you where you can't get a tree stand don't rule out these ground blinds man they're awesome let's get out of here well I think that'll about do it you know this habitat improvements uh, hunting improvements uh, just any of this land management stuff it's it's so fun yeah I, I've said it a bunch of times during this video but you know being able to interact with the with the local wildlife and and just being a part of uh, 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 the hunt more it just lengthens your experience uh, uh, it lengthens your hunt uh, uh, and your time of field and you know it's for the greater good you know you're doing the be the wildlife a benefit you're doing yourself a benefit um, you're more inspired you're more apt to hunt harder and, and uh, work harder for it and you know they don't have to be big giant plots and I mean these are small plots I'm doing they're just really fun and they're super effective you don't you don't need a, a, a lot to work with do the best with what you got and uh, you know don't get don't get depressed and down if if uh, you're not getting tons of pictures of deer especially bucks if you're not getting the class bucks that you want to get you know make a five-year plan you know R write it down if you want you know what you what you choose to shoot who can shoot what uh, you know what what are your goals write your goals down and it, it always helps to write stuff down um, and just kind of implement a plan and stick with it and be patient with it you know a lot of these bucks right now it's hot it's super buggy the deer movements just I mean it's not good right now so don't be bummed out if you're not getting tons of pictures the deer are trying to find bug relief they're staying in the shade in the cool damp areas uh, you know doing what they can to, to be as comfortable out here as they can be you know and a lot of the times these bucks uh, you know you got high buck dispersal rates once that velvet's gone a lot of the times you won't see bucks that you've been getting on cameras anymore and you'll get new bucks in so if you're not getting a lot of quality bucks on camera this time of year be patient because once that velvet drops, you'll have new new uh, new deer move into your areas, and all of a sudden you'll start getting pictures of of uh, uh, different bucks. And a lot of the times, if you're getting pictures of, of a same big buck all summer long, a lot of the times that can be where he hangs out in the summer, and he can move off somewhere else. Somewhere else, but generally, once they lose their velvet, they disperse and they break up from their bachelor groups, and they go inhabit these different areas. So just hang tight, be patient. You got good habitat. Man, the deer will be there, I guarantee it. So, I know there wasn't a lot of action in this video. There's a lot of talking, but that was kind of the principle of it, to, to share a lot of the information with you guys and show you what I'm doing with these plots. And, uh, you know, I look forward to showing you some more footage of, of uh, hopefully some deer in these plots and uh, maybe a little bit of red on some of this clover and chicory. But we're going to go home and put some dry clothes on and uh, uh, cool off and uh, maybe slap something on the grill. And uh, just remember, more time afield, your life's going to be a lot better for it, and so is theirs. Keep it in the woods. I'm Joshua John Wells, and this is Minnesota Outdoor Journal. Cut. Everything else, and this is running just way, way, way too long. Cheap, I think. Ah, cut. Awesome.